Cyberlink, the Cyberlink you come with a bit too, a t tiny bit too slow, so I was wondering, and stop it, sorry, energy coming in wanting to connect in a magic way, I was just, um, No, I gotta focus. <sighs> I'm ignoring this person who wants to connect with me. I'm like putting them to the side for now. Okay. So, so this you come was coming in a bit so I was a bit impatient, so I have to be patient. And damn it, in my head again. Okay, just gotta keep, I just gotta um, just not focus. On him. Okay. I keep trying <laughs> not to focus on him. Okay. It's gonna be fine. Everything is cool. Everything is cool. Goal orientated. Okay. <sighs> Everything is cool. Everything is cool. Okay. So the UCAM was a bit slow at coming through, so I had to be patient on them. Okay. So in my last video, um, I spoke about the inner child. I can't even remember, to be honest, what I mentioned with this inner. Oh yeah, it was. T was it the twin flame? I can't remember. Something to the inner child. So I want to talk a bit more about this. Um, values factor. I just want to talk about these books, that's basically what this video is. And then we have self, your own true love, that's yourself. It's not within a balance. I want to go into this as well, which I didn't mention in any other book, so I'm going to start here. I think I mentioned the root chakra in one of my videos, so I'm going to talk about the root right now. Let's talk about the root. The root chakra is also called Maladhara. It's it refers to supporting your roots. This meaning comes from splitting the word Maladhara into two words. Mala that means root, and Dara that means support. I just wanna sorry. This is a puppy. I'm just trying to add a bit of cheerfulness because there might be some sadness in this. So I want to kind of raise your vibration a wee bit, your energy, but your mood. Mola, that means root, and Dara, that means support. The chakra is the first one of the masher. When you balance the chakra, you are creating a solid foundation. It's like a house, it's like the foundation of a house to open the main chakras. Just think about laying a foundation for a house. Yes, that's exactly what I was saying. That you'll be living in for the rest of your life. This foundation is embedded in firm soil and will give you the stability that you need to make a home that is filled with joy for many years. So stability comes from the root. And as you'll also find, it's all, it's all connected to the stomach. This chakra is the base for consciousness in the body. This, the necessity for it can be felt when the energy connects us to the earth. Therefore, it relates to material requirements, emotional needs, sexuality, physical strength, and survival. When you look at the modern world, the chakra basically translates to financial and emotional security. Um, this, this chakra is the color red and it's strongly associated with survival. It doesn't matter if you feel secure now, it has more to do with how you, how safe you felt as a child. So even though you may be, may have brilliant confidence now and great self-esteem, if you didn't in childhood, then it's going to connect you to that. If you look at psychologist Eric Erickson's development states, development, develop, yeah, met states. The first state of trust versus 
mistrust is related to the development of this chakra. When you were an infant and your caregivers gave you the things you needed to survive constantly, you should have felt secure. You thought the world was a place where your basic needs could be met. This this is like what what I learned in psychology, which is um, uh, the parent or sorry the mother child uh, attachment theory. So the less attached the child feels from the mother, the more unstable that that child can get when they grow into adulthood. But the more but the less attached they are, um, the better the child is, but there needs to be a balance. And my illusion was that I thought that what this means, it's, it's physical attachment, you know, it's like physical support. Um, you know what I mean? Like, so there's survival, like what they're talking about, which is the root, which is like your basic needs. So you've got food water, shelter, and clothing. What I didn't realize is this is also connected to emotional and mental support, which is what um, I struggled with because I didn't receive it because the family that I was born into weren't able to deal with their emotions, weren't able to deal with their own mind. They don't know their own mind. They may think they do, but they don't. And they talk a lot about common sense. They talk about being rational, logical, reasonable but they're not logical rational or reasonable they're not their emotions are all over the place and they haven't even faced them they distract themselves anyway so so that would be connected to the idea of attachment theory which comes from psychology uh, I think I learned about in psychology which is It's like social conditioning, so learning, I think it was learning or developmental psychology. Uh, so basically the child learns through their environment. They come into the world wondering where they are, uh, what their place is in the world, uh, trying to get familiar with the place. Uh, connecting with it in any way that they can, trying to understand, trying to make sense of it, trying to make sense of the people around them. as a form of consciousness, right? Um, a form of consciousness just basically means um, existing. It's physical existence. And a part of this form of consciousness, it has its mental, emotional, physical, sexual, psychological, and spiritual aspects. So when I say that, what I basically mean is there's a body, mind, soul. There's a body, mind, and soul. There's also spirit, but we don't speak about spirit in the mainstream a lot because um, the attention seems to be more focused on humanity and mankind than it is, is on God, so a lot of people are, are disconnected from source, they're disconnected from God. No, they're disconnected from a higher intelligence outside of themselves. So we don't speak about spirit much. There's a lot of mention about the soul, but we all have a soul. So that's just basically your personality, that's not your spirit. Your soul is not your spirit. It's um, it is kind of like a part of your spirit. But anyway, so... So, Eric Erickson's development, development states, the first state of trust versus mistrust is related to the development of the chakra. When you were an infant and your caregivers gave you the things you needed to survive constantly, you should have felt secure. You thought the world was a place where your basic needs could be met. And you see, this is the thing. It's like your basic needs were met. However, what hasn't been identified necessarily as a basic need hasn't been emphasized enough, hasn't been given enough credit, is your emotional needs. Because that's really important. And a lot of people out there will say, say a lot of parents out there will say, well, uh, emotional needs are met, but that's not true. It's not true. Because if you grow up 
um, fearing intimacy, uh, fearing affection, fearing love, if you don't know what love is, like really what love is, it, you find it hard to let love in or to trust love or you think that love cause, causes only pain and heartache and that it can't be trusted, then you do not, you are not born with emotional security. You just weren't. That's a lie. You've been lied to. And that's a part of your basic needs is your emotional needs. But your emotional needs have not been met. It hasn't been met. A lot of people, you know, they seem to be kind of that way. Anyway, so, on the other hand, if your caregiver is delayed or withheld giving you what you needed, you might find that your root chakra is, is blocked. But what you need is emotional support, you know, proper emotional support. And emotional support is not talking things through. It's not discussing things. It's the acceptance, the express. Sorry, the acceptance, the expression, the acceptance, the expression, uh, and the, in a way, the the detachment of various different types of emotions to positive to negative, expressed in a healthy way, and expressed in a way that's very effective to help you uh, balance these emotions out, to help you overcome any ones that are kind of trying to control you, um, and to just basically appreciate them. When looking at emotions, this chakra bases the focus on primal feelings, and the spiritual focus is based on sympathy and being able to sense energy. Its color is red and is located at the bottom of the spine. A lot of people seem to think that the root is the feet, the ground, because it's it's connected associated to the ground, but it's not. It's the spine. It's down here. That's kind of where all these different energies. Uh, um. When it is balanced, you will feel accomplishment and experience stable and vibrant energy. This relates to requirements like safety, shelter, and money. Yeah, but there's different types of safety. Okay, so you shelter, but if you don't feel happy at home or safe at home or wanted at home, you don't really have shelter, do you? And then you've got money. There will be times that this chakra will be unbalanced and this will be accompanied by consequences. And here's, it gets interesting. Excessive energy in the chakra could result in emotional, in, in, could result in, sorry, emotional instability, such as anxiety. On the physical level, you might have prostate issues if you are a man. Men and women may experience hip pain, lower back problems, constipation, and sluggishness. Other negative problems could show up like diarrhea and fear if the chakra doesn't get activated. <coughs> okay. I just coughed there because... Um, there's an issue with the throat. That's the throat chakra. Communication, using your inner voice, express something, or else there's something coming through. I could have communication coming through. That's what Angel's trying to tell. Anyway, back to this. Your energy levels will also get beaten up. You will experience feelings of low self esteem, irritability, unexplained fatigue, and daydreaming. To get the chakra balanced, um, okay, sorry, that, that's just the, yes, really. okay, I said that the root seems to also be associated with the stomach, as well as the family, the, the stomach. <clears throat> the ironic thing is a lot of people with, with digestive issues or such as, you know, irritable bowel or uh, constipation um, or whatever, um, seem to be connected to family <laughs> and childhood issues and control issues and trying to cling on to something to, 
to really hold on to something tight. And this is uh, like a spasm. And and this is um, I must look into. That. I found an article on that when I was in Dublin, and I was reading. It was very interesting. But um, yeah, it's connected to the stomach anyway. Here, so down. I have to do this. Sorry. So down here. Let me see. Show you. Um, that's the stomach area. Okay. So that's connected to your sacral, and your sacral and your root are kind of strongly connected because they're both about security and stability, you know, connected to confidence issues and family issues, okay? So the definition of the sacral chakra is s sorry, it can be broken down into two words, s Via, that means one's own, and Adhishana means residence or dwelling place. So your residence or dwelling place is where you rest, where you live, where you spend a lot of your time, it's your dwelling place, your regular. This chakra is needed for our sexuality and creativity. It can enhance the creative energies that drive us to enjoy our life. It motivates us to enjoy your efforts and indulge in activities that give us pleasure like sex. Um, it's or this chakra's color is orange and can be found above the pubic bone and just below the navel. It surrounds the hypo, hypogastric plexus and the genital region. This chakra's element is water and this is equivalent to cohesion. Passiveness. This chakra's energy is lunar, passive, and feminine. Anytime you take materials, mental or physical, and turn them into new things, you are using creative energy. The main problem with being creative is that as we grow older, we are often discouraged from being creative. This can even be seen during our educational years. After we've gone through the phase where, I'm gonna ignore them because I'm busy. I mean, because I'm, this can even be seen during our educational years. After we've gone through the phase where cutting paper, painting or coloring is acceptable. We have to mold ourselves into being less creative. We have to conform, follow all the rules and learn to fit into society. We can easily lose our creative energy and our ideas during this process. As adults, we become used to doing what is right, the latest trends or what other people feel is acceptable. If we are asked to invent something new, we have a hard time doing it. Creativity, sensuality, joy and happiness in our lives indicate this chakra is imbalance. If it is imbalanced, you might suffer from restlessness, hormone imbalance, obesity, oversensitivity, and addiction. Addiction is present when a person enjoys things that can't nourish our health and soul. If the chakra isn't active, you will have feelings of insecurity, guilt, and fear. And can you see how insecurity is also connected to the what did I say? Yeah, it's connected to the throat, but it's also connected to the root. Because remember that remember that the root is connected to security, right? And self-esteem. And stability. Well, similar to that, uh, the sacral is also connected to security. So when it's imbalanced you will feel insecure and it's guilt and fear. But if we experience any underactivity, we might suffer from a lack of creative power or passion, decreased sex drive, Im impotence and depression. I'm also going to talk about the solar because the solar uh, is also <laughs> the stomach it's right here instead of down here so your solar is right here 
similar to the root chakra it's also the foundation of the chakras it's very important because it um it relates to how you perceive your world and the people around you and what your interpretation is of human existence human consciousness and uh the afterlife sorry just felt something because i got shiver um anyway Okay, so I want to talk about solar and then we'll leave it at that. The solar plexus chakra is also called Manipura. It can be broken down into two words, meaning to jewel, and pure meaning city. This chakra enhances consciousness for our mental bodies. It can connect us to individual elements like the, individu like the individual expression, self-image or conscious minds, and personal power. Emotionally, it can focus on feelings that relate to self-esteem, doubt, and fear. So again, we see that with the root chakra, um, when it's imbalanced, um, You will feel emotionally hmm. yeah sorry you'll feel emotional unstable like you'll feel uh, anxiety and you'll have dif difficulties with uh, feeling safe and feeling like you've shelter and you're going to have financial issues problems you're also going to have physical problems like lower back pain problems, constipation, and sluggishness. If you're a man, you're going to have prostate problems, right? Um, you'll also have low self-esteem, irritability, and unexplained fatigue. The spiritual part of the root chakra is sympathy. And it's connected to the basic needs. So during childhood you should have felt secure and it doesn't matter if you're an adult and you feel secure because it's about how you felt as a child that's connected to the root so it relates to material requirements emotional needs sexuality physical strength and survival okay so then we have the sacral which uh, So you got emotion needs, so you've got feelings here and emotions, yeah. It's the consciousness for our emotions. It's also connected to the imagination. Yeah. It, it enables us to express sympathy. Creativity is massive here. Okay. Okay, so just like with the emotional issues with uh, the root uh, <clears throat> and the sacral, you're going to have oversensitive, oversens oversensitivity, sorry, issues, imbalance, um, hormone problems, you feel restless. Okay. So with the solar, it's the expression of our feelings, our self-esteem, and our emotions. It's letting them out. And you're going to have doubt and fear. So you're going to have doubt and fear if, if you feel insecure, uh, restless, if you have fatigue, if uh, you don't feel safe, if you don't feel like you have shunter, if you don't feel like your emotions are met. If you have difficulty trusting, you're going to have doubt and fear. It's not associated with impairment. But the solar is connected to personal power and identity. That's what I mean. Uh, it's how you identify yourself, how you perceive your reality, well around the people around you, and how you interpret it. Then it yes, so that's still kind of around the stomach area. Um, 
when it is balanced it enhances our feelings of self-esteem willpower courage and strength so you'll have a lot of courage and strength there so can you see how the three of them are connected strongly if it's overactive you'll have a lot of energy that can be accompanied by feelings of being hunger hungry for power wanting to control everything and needing to be in control um, if it's underactive, you're going to be timid, feeling insecure and indecisiveness. So again, with the insecurity, the same as with the root, the same as with the solar plexus. Sorry, the same as with the sacral. Being timid, feeling insecure and indecisiveness. When it's not active, you will feel completely depleted again, like with the fatigue, with the sacral fatigue problems. You are faced with chronic fatigue. Again, mention the fatigue again. We are faced with chronic fatigue, poor digestion, and powerlessness. The chakra can be healed. Again. It's interesting how it mentions reverse warrior. Anyway, I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to talk about the heart, but I'm going to talk about the heart later. So this is recovery of your inner child, liberating inner self. Healing is making ourselves whole. Healing our inner child is, is connected to childhood. Healing our inner child it is a major part of our recovery. Lucia Capucino is a master at gently guiding you through this process. Love yourself enough to recover from the past. The inner child lives within all of us. It is the part of us that feels emotions and is playful, intuitive and creative. Usually hidden under our grown-up personas, the inner child holds the key to intimacy in relationships, physical and emotional well-being, recovery from addictions and the creativity and wisdom of our inner selves. Remember that creativity comes from uh, the solar, solar, Correct me if I'm wrong. Probably forgot why he said solar plexus. Isn't it the solar? I think it's the solar. I think it's the solar. I'll check. <laughs> um, anyway. So we're talking about the solar plexus, the sacral, and the rouge. Okay. The inner child holds the key to intimacy and relationships. Um, the inner child holds the key to intimacy and relationships, physical and emotional well-being. It's the recovery from addictions and the creativity and wisdom of our inner selves. Recovery of your inner child is the only book that shows you how to have a first-hand experience of your inner child, actually feeling its emotions and recapturing its sense of wonder by writing and drawing with your non-dominant hand. Okay. Expanding on the highly acclaimed technique introduced in the power of the other hand. Here, Dr. Capshwilo, oh, sorry, <laughs> see, I can't pronounce your name right, shares scores of hands on activities that will help you to embrace your vulnerable child and your angry child. So it's okay to be vulnerable, it's okay to be angry, and the nurturing parent within. And finally, you discover the creative and magical child that can heal your life. Um, this, this person here. Okay. Um, I'll focus on family a bit later because I do have something associated with family, but I'm going to go and discuss this book a bit. Okay. Okay, so chapter two, meeting your inner child. Direct experience of the inner child happens in many ways. It is something we have all, sorry, 
It is something we all have at one time or another, but may not have recognized. I call this experience of the child within the child's state. When you enter the child's state, you feel and behave like a child. You may even be unaware of it yourself, but others often notice. You see it in your face, eyes, or body. You hear it in your voice. They also observe it in your behavior. Often when adults speak about experiences of the inner child, they inadvertently place their hands over their belly or heart. Although this gesture is often unconscious, it is a way of acknowledging the child's presence in the body. Our inner child speaks through bodily sensations. It reacts emotionally when we experience physical pain. It may feel physical pain in response to strong. Sorry, it may feel physical pain in response to strong emotions. When we are tired and want a nap, are under the weather, or feel very ill, that is the inner child asking us to take care of it. In the first encounter with my inner child in therapy, the therapist told me afterward that my facial expression and body language had the qualities of a little kid spontaneous and awkward in the child state i was unaware of how i looked not until later when she gave me that feedback did i become conscious of my appearance of my of my <laughs> of my appearance appear i don't know what's happening in my voice it's oh okay and this is the nervous system for imitating or acting like a child had been the farthest thing from my mind. This was no pretense. I had actually become as a little child. There is an immense difference between pretending to be a child and experiencing the child within. The child state comes from inside. It is a feeling in the body and emotions. It has nothing to do with performing or play acting. In fact, you can experience your inner child without moving an inch or saying a word. There are many activities ahead that are designed to help you find that child, nurture it, and include it in your life. But you can start right now to become aware of the inner child in your daily life, since the inner child is very physical. It may come out when you're enjoying sports, or dancing, or simply walking delightedly along a sandy beach at sundown, listening to the whoop of seagulls overhead. Your child may tell you it wants a tall glass of lemonade on a hot summer afternoon, or a big container of crunchy popcorn at the movies, or a steamy bowl of soup on a cold winter evening. Sometimes the inner child wants to cuddle up under a soft blanket for an afternoon nap. At other times, a child may want to have fun hiking in the mountains. It may want to play, dress up, and wear wild colors or glitzy jewelry. Other times, it may prefer messing around in the garden in old jeans a paint spattered shirt and floppy hat. Some inner children thrive on ball games, while others would rather have a tea party. Shop for a moment and reflect upon some of the physical ways in which your inner child comes out in your life. When we stay exclusively in the grown up world of thoughts, plans and responsibilities, we cut ourselves off from our bodies. This is often referred to as living in our heads. Living in our heads away from our bodies is one way that we abandon the inner child. So begin pl pl paying special attention on a daily basis to inner child who lives in your body. One way to become more aware of the physicality of the inner child is to observe children in the outer world, watch their movement, observe how they may interact with the environment with the whole bodies. Sorry, I'm getting a bit stuck and I'm getting a bit tired, but it's not, this is not, I feel like, my soulmate wants to connect with me passionately. <laughs> he wants me to feel passionately and there's a lot of love and passion coming through. Not a lot, but some of it. And I feel like, sorry, it's causing me to lose what I'm trying to say and lose my words and it's causing me to, um, not that I don't want to connect with this person, but it's just, it's, it's, it's causing me to, um, going to the whole national job. Like, I'm not going to think about it anyway. Um, so I spoke about that, so I speak about the other part because I'm just getting, I think whoever it is wants to connect with me now telepathically. It's where you connect to energy you're attached, so. <coughs> like, there is talking, which is talking, and there is there is an energy 
um, that exists, you know, <clears throat> you know, it's human in, in the flesh. You're familiar with this person, <laughs> with this energy, and you just know. Trust me, just know when they want to connect with you energetically, uh, even if they use their emotions on. All right, sexually or physically. And I say that because I'm feeling passion come in. So I feel like there's passion. I'm feeling passionate energy coming in and they want me to connect with them that way. Like they want me to feel, and it's like, no, I'm, I'm working here. I'm, I'm spreading this message and I just can't be distracting myself. But I feel like they want my attention now. I don't know why. Anyway. I want to show you what I got today. I'm not sure if I should focus on it, <clears throat> but I'm deciding to focus on it, and it's helping with my the hope. It's helping with my vision. Um, I just felt like I felt like God, my angels, wanted me to focus on it. Wants me to daydream about it. Wants me to think about it a lot. Um, because it's part of my life. I have pushed away, so I'm gonna show it to you now. It's not that exciting, really. That's not the books I showed you in the other video, so. I'm going to show it to you now. It's a coloring book. <laughs> I, I, I know it's the, um, I know it's for kids, but, uh, it's for adults. This is for adults. It says country romance. Um, I just feel like I just feel like my angels and God want me to daydream about this, fantasize about this, and the reason is not because it's delusional. It's because I pushed it away. Okay, I pushed away in, in some form. I pushed away love. I pushed away intimacy because I don't know. I have issues with trust. I don't know. I've, I trust this person, I'm worried that they might hurt me, what if they cause heartache, what if they get bored, what if they leave me, and all stuff like this, and uh, I just feel like, especially to add to to the heaviness and the tenseness to make it a bit light and playful, I think they want me to focus on this. Um, it's just a coloring book, so it's like, so rather than actually reading it and being in my head, a lot you just like being comfortable and just play so while I'm coloring the stuff in there um, it will help me to visualize it to be optimistic to be hopeful and to look at this that's lovely look at a flaw oh, okay mic down sorry I just feel like if I do do that, it'll, it'll keep me focused on the end goal, keep me focused on the vision, being optimistic, positive, oh, there is something out there, and to just be playful. But if I have someone trying to connect with me passionately, they're going to distract me. I mean, like, when I try to <sighs> overcome my... Um, sexual confidence issues and especially when it comes to sexual intimacy and not passion and stuff uh, I invested in um, fiction that would help to overcome that and deal with that and accept that and be open to that uh, and it started really well but then masculine energy came through and he really distracted me and I, I kind of got really annoyed and pissed off because I was telling him telepathically 
don't disturb me now. I'm trying to enjoy this. I need to overcome the self-esteem issues. And when you're trying to overwhelm me and overload me with all this passion, loads of passion, loads of sexual energy, because if it's just love, if it's just peace, if it's just love, and if it's just joy, then that's fine. But when this is really, really strong, intense passion energy, the sexual energy, and you just know that it is, how can you focus? You can't. I mean, that's what I feel like was coming through there. And I just said to him, and no, I want to do my work. So I think he's listening. I don't know. I think he wants to connect with me in that way. And he can connect with me in that way if he wants to. But I'm really trying here. I'm really trying to overcome these obstacles and express myself and show gratitude and stuff. And I just feel like there's been a lot of things I've tr tried to distract me and they have um yeah just been real massive challenges okay so this is another book here that i wanted to show you so i'm gonna read this one now uh i'm going to read out the love part not the relationship part because she asks you to go into your past relationships and identify patterns about why you weren't effective and successful in your relationships and and how it's connected to your childhood and how you view your parents and stuff like that and how it's connected to how you view yourself how you want people to view you so whatever way you want to view yourself you become that and then you project that out to those around you basically right so love in 90 days and just for the record, I'm going to say that in 2018, um, when I started my um, my spiritual, okay, fine. <laughs> when I started, when I started my personal development, relationship, um, sexual, yeah. <laughs> sexuality, uh, social, um, submissive, dominant, uh, feminine, masculine, um, business, uh, <laughs> uh, course. Yeah, it was all of that stuff. Uh, basically because there was a part in it that my coach invited me to and it was connected to business being an entrepreneur and stuff like that because he was one but the course i was doing was spirituality sexuality sexuality sorry relationships and it even was associated with self-esteem and how you view yourself and how you blocked yourself from moving forward so he was telling me that although it's associated with relationships like if you had a um a girlfriend or brother or, or brother why did I say brother <laughs> a girlfriend a boyfriend a where's sister coming from now <laughs> a, a a boyfriend a girlfriend a wife a husband okay um that's a massive part and role in it but it's also about how you contribute value to the world around you. Um, that's one reason I like the course as well is because a lot of it focuses it's on yourself. You know, it's what you can. It's how you can influence the world. Um, so the massive thing that my coach taught me was that. Have you ever asked yourself about why many people are drawn to you, why you attract certain people, um, why you settle for certain people, why you accept certain people, why you think a certain way, why you feel a certain way, why you go into self-sabotage, because he told me I do that a lot in pro procrastination, why I'm so hard on myself, why I haven't shown strong evidence of being an independent adult why i run from conflict why not why but um 
the impression that I give on people around me. So rather than saying, you know, these are your flaws and focusing on strengths and weaknesses, he focused on different parts of value. So I'll talk about later because as he said, he said he'd be delighted if I uh, taught the stuff that he taught me, but you know, <laughs> uh, it's the copyright, so I'll mention him. I think he'd be pleased if I did that. He has helped me an awful lot. I mean, he was put in an awkward situation, but um, yeah, he has helped me a lot and I really appreciate uh, his support, his influence and his teachings. Anyway, <laughs> back to this. But anyway, the point I have to make is he said to myself, it's a lie that I don't possess any value and it's a lie that I don't possess high value. I do possess high value. I just haven't been aware of it. I haven't been recognized it or it hasn't been mentioned to me or it hasn't been brought to my attention. So then he asked me, well, then if you don't possess such high value, then why are you attracting, you know, why attracting guys or girls, whatever? Why do you get people who seem to show admiration towards you? Hmm. Because I sing very well. A lot of people can sing very well. It has to be something else. I have starlight quality. Okay. And then he said, I don't believe that. After talking to you, you have a lot more value and you, you don't you don't recognize it. And I'm gonna show you. You have very, very high value and you've been living in scarcity. That's what he told me. You've been living in scarcity instead of abundant. Your mind's very scarce. You don't believe you deserve what you deserve. You, you, you think you deserve less. You think you're worthy of less. You don't believe that you should have it. You don't believe you can get any better, but you can. And you need to stop pulling yourself back from that because you deserve a lot. You deserve the greatest things and you should seek those greatest things. So if you find someone who you think is not good enough for you, but is your match and does make you know happy, and if you're happy around that person, then don't let self sabotage get in the way. So it's like that. Anyway, he said I sabotaged a lot. Okay, so we'll just, maybe we'll do the introduction. Um, X, I, X3. <laughs> yes, believe in him. Who am I to suggest such a leap of faith? Good question. I am a person who knows love, how it works, how it heals, how it hurts. I know how it fills hearts, how it fails and empties them and how it can return. I study love, talk love, live it and breathe it. Most importantly, I help it spread and take root in the sweet birth of new relationships every day. I help love to come, surprise and delight people like you. It most definitely wasn't always this way. I was not born into love or a joyful welcome. My childhood, adolescent and early day in life, to use the technical term, sucked. Loneliness and disappointment were my middle names. But that hard beginning led me to hunger and look for the secrets of love. And I've been on the mission for a long time. I just knew in my gut that somewhere, somehow, someone had figured out how to take the right risks, how to be brave for the right reasons, how to create this flame of passionate yet lasting love. And I wanted to have that kind of fulfillment. <laughs> so starting college where I studied psychology, I hope you don't mind if this person wants to connect with me in a passionate way and it shows up on my face or you see me close my eyes, please forgive me. I studied, I so starting college where I studied psychology, then a, a doctor, see now, stop, hold on, sorry, and I want to have that kind of, okay, so starting college where I studied psychology, then in a doctoral program in clinical psychology and beyond. I set out to find the secret lessons that would allow me to live in a state of love. I studied happy couples, hard to find, but I did, and I 
apprenticehood with mentors, other psychologists, self-help gurus, and sages. After thousands of hours watching, learning, and studying, I finally got it. I discovered the rules, strategies, and personal growth lessons that put people on the path to healing, <laughs> had transformed <laughs> self-esteem and intimacy or abandonment issues into empowerment. I'm sorry, I, I'm just, uh, I'm, tr I'm trying my best to, 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 uh, it sounds mean, take back my power. Um, because he's really trying to overpower me with his passion right now. <laughs> I don't know who it is. I don't know if it's between my soulmate. Could be either, could be both. Um, hard to find, but I did on my apprenticehood with mentors, other psychologists, self-help gurus and sages. After thousands of hours watching, learning and studying, I finally got it. I discovered the rules strategies and personal growth lessons that put people on the path to healing then that transformed low self-esteem and intimacy or abandonment issues into empowerment and in so doing grinnings of the love in 90 days program thankfully i used them to get out of my deadly dating patterns and marry sam my rock my love i call him my partner in sublime Okay, there's a person explaining her shoe. I have an MA and a PhD in clinical psychology. I have co-authored books and articles for therapists about singles, couples, and love. I've been married happily to Sam for over 25 years. We've weathered one of our families disowning us and refusing to meet our baby girl because one of us is Jewish while the other is Italian. The devastating death of a child a life-threatening illness and deadly boring stretches when we we seem to have absolutely nothing in common. I'm just, if I sound angry or annoyed or if I'm rushing or if I'm going like this, that's just me trying to overcome being overempowered by a very strong passion or starting very so strong passion. Anyway, sorry, it's, it's happening again. <laughs> Okay, Sam, for over 25 years. We've weathered one of our families disowning us and refusing to meet our baby girl because one of us is Jewish while the other is Italian. The devastating death of a child, a life-threatening illness, and deadly boring stretches when we seem to have absolutely nothing. Sometimes it just hits my spine. It's just weird. The devastating death of a child, a life-threatening illness, and deadly boring stretches when we seem to have absolutely nothing in common. And did I mention fighting? Did I mention fighting like like only two competitive competitive PhDs can? But today we're much stronger, more in love and sexier than ever together. I know the road to love personally, and I know it through the countless women whom I've helped to find happy new beginnings. Uh, this book is based on my personal and clinical experience, plus the latest research on love relationships. Each chapter contains many references that can be found in the notes at the end of the book. When I give you advice, consider what I've just told you and consider it carefully. Try it on for size before you reject it impulsive, impulsively and tailor it to your individual needs so that you make it even better and more effective. The truth is, I am writing this book because I treasure beyond words what I have experienced with Sam, the best friendship and sexy love that fills the holes in my heart and opens opens all the possibilities in living my my life my life life full out. This gift, this miracle, makes me teary as I write about it. A gift, this powerful cause for being. There is something happening in my spine, it's weird. I write about it. A gift, this powerful cause for being shared with. He's pulling on energy from the spine. I give this powerful cause for being shared with you. 
with you. Watch the spine, it's connected to the root, remember? Yeah. But the energy is usually connected from the root here. Masculine feminine energy. And the emotions. You feel the emotions here in the heart space, which I should have spoken about right here. And for some reason, these energy connections are associated with the stomach as well. But it makes sense because it's also connected to your basic needs. Um, and then the memories are, sorry, no, the memories are at the back here. The memories are right there, I think. Unless they're here, because well, this is the third. This is your vision right here, and this is. No, but this. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, uh, trying to think. The telepathy. Telepathy. It could come here. Well, you'll feel it here. Um. One form of telepathy is where you imitate a person that you can't see, but when you imitate this person, anyone who knows this person will know who you're imitating. They'll be like, why are you imitating this person? You're like, I don't know. You say, well, that's how the person would behave. That's how they speak. That's how they act. That's just the way that it is. It's an energy connection. That's a soul connection. You know? Um. I don't like when my energy for speaking or thinking is being affected by anything, basically. Even if, if it's passionate energy, even if it feels good, but when it's very strong or intense, it's just not. Call it passionate, call it sexual, it doesn't matter. Um, maybe we should kind of leave it at that. I think he's calmed down, I think he's not sure whether or not to connect with me in that way again, I don't know. But uh, I'll leave it at that because it's a, a long video. I mean, I do appreciate him connecting with me in that way, but if if I'm trying to teach something or if I'm trying to solve something or plan for something, I like to get a bit of space, both the physical space and a space in, in my head to be able to achieve that, to, to do that, to accomplish that. No. But if you want to, for fun, I could do other videos where we are connecting so that you know what it looks like and how it feels like. But as I said before, expect me to imitate this person. Well, you might not know who this person is. They expect me to imitate this person through language, tone, voice, how I look, how I dress, you know, what I think, how I move, stuff like that. That's how it works. Um, and you can feel like that person is, is beside you, you know, as I'm going to... I think I need to stop and take a break because I really feel like that 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 passionate energy could hit me again. <laughs> it could be my soulmate, my twin, I don't know which one. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stop now. Yeah, it's a very long video, so that's what I'm gonna say, okay? Uh so one more time I'll show you it's this one here. Alright. You know what I just did? I forgot to mention it. I have to mention this. Okay, we have to go into this because I didn't mention that yet. Okay, what is this? Okay. I have to mention it because I, uh, I said I was going to. So, alright. And I included this, which kind of went against the plan because I didn't mention it in my other video. It is connected so that what the hell? I have to go into this because I, I like I, I showed it in my other video so I have to go into this. Okay. So this is Dr. 
DiMartino, and this is the value factor. The secret to creating an inspired, fulfilling life by Dr. John Martin. Um, what is the most important step you can take to achieve the life you've always dreamed of? You might think the answer is something like saving money, getting a, get a better job, find my soulmate or improve my... Improve my... Right, it's a bit... Yeah. I know. Solutions like these might offer temporary satisfaction, but no. What happens? I'm sorry. I like there's something. I don't know. Like whatever. <laughs> Last take the film or help you achieve. Okay, whatever. The values factor shows you how to create a life in which every minute can be inspiring and fulfilling. The first step is to identify what you find most meaningful, the values in life that are most important to you. Once you understand your own unique values and align your life accordingly, you can achieve fulfillment in every, in every area of your life, deepening your loving relationships, creating an inspiring, inspiring, what? inspiring career, establishing financial freedom and tapping into, is that tapping into, the tapping into a rich spiritual life? Okay. Okay, so the values factor this is something my coach taught me. Uh, what is the values factor? Your values factor is your. Hmm. Um, I think it's just what matters to you in life. He suggests that you go, sorry, let me be more professional. <laughs> Dr. John D. Martin suggests that you go back to your childhood and see what you enjoyed as a child, what you're very passionate about and connect with that. Um, okay. Okay. If there's one thing my time on earth has taught me, it is the remarkable ability of human beings to overcome obstacles, transform, transform their most challenging situations, and fi find profound meaning in their lives. But the key to this transformation each and every time is the values factor. Knowing your highest values enables you to align your life's actions with the things that mean the most to you. Not being aware of those highest values makes it exponentially more difficult to create a meaningful, fulfilling life. It really is as simple as that. What values are and what they are not. When I ask you to think about what your values are, what words come to mind? If you're most like if you're like most people, you might find yourself listing listing, sorry, abstract qualities, honesty, integrity, trust, or perhaps you would refer to a set of religious beliefs, a patriarch ideal or code of morality. There are probably not really, these are probably not really your own personal values, rather they're what I call, stop, and he's trying to connect with me again, sorry, rather they are what I call social idealisms, socially acceptable ways of thinking and behaving. Social ideal idealisms sound nice, but they don't necessarily reflect the true driving force that shapes your perceptions, decisions, actions, and feelings. You might generally believe that you're inspired by these ideals, but they are more likely to reflect your ideas of how you should ought to or have to behave, not what you truly uh, value most. You can recognize social idealisms because they're usually presented as general statements and abstract category, categories such as people should be honest, treat others the way you want them to treat you. A good person goes to church, synagogue, mosque, or temple. An evolved person is always generous or altruistic. Um, true values, by contrast, are as specific to you as your fingerprint, your retinal pattern, and your voice print. Perhaps what you truly value most is spending time with your family, listening to beautiful music, and the chance to play basketball several times a week. 
or perhaps you value stylish clothes, nursing injured animals back to health, or expanding your enterprise's global reach. Your highest values may change throughout your life. Most people's do, but they're still they're still the very essence of what you're drawn to. Maybe if I sing, it might calm them down a bit. <laughs> your highest values may change throughout your life. Most people do, but they're still the very essence of you, what you're drawn to, what you inevitably seek out, what you live for. They are a kind of internal compass pointing you toward the activities, people and places that most fulfill you away from situations people are likely to feel fulfilling. If you think of which activities and relationships tr truly nourish your innermost being, those are your highest values. Just as no one can choose your fingerprints or alter the patterns of your retina, no outside authority, no parent, teacher, political leader, or religious figure can define your values. Only you can look into your own mind, heart, and soul and discover what is truly most important to you. Of course, you may find some similarities between your values and those of others. For example, both of you and another person may love learning, but one of you love to learn facts and figures while the other revels in mastering profound philosophical concepts. Sorry for raising my voice. Or perhaps one of you delights in mastering the ins and outs of investments in the stock market, while the other loves to invent complex financial instruments. In the domain of home and family, perhaps two parents equally value nurturing their children, but one expresses that nurturing through providing challenges and discipline, while another expresses, expresses that nurturing through long conversations about feelings and offering, offering comfort in times of difficulty. As you can see, even when two sets of values seem to be similar, one person's value will never be quite like anybody else's. If you and another person had exactly the same values, one of you would not be necessary. <laughs> the world needs many different individuals, each with a unique set of values. Your unique purpose is to understand and fulfill your highest values. It is both a spiritual quest and a key to a fulfilling life. This is why I suggest that you focus on your own personal journey of self-discovery and not allow social idealisms or possible stagnant traditions or conventions to cloud the clarity of what really, of what really matters to you. Social idealisms that you learned from your parents or, or teach... Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> social idealisms that you learned from your parents or teachers may lead you to believe that you should save money but if buying a movie ticket a motorcycle or a more expensive house is more in line with your true values you will spend instead of save social idealisms idealisms picked up from your family or the culture around you might cause you to think that you should put that you should put that you should put 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 in more time at work but if going home to be with your children, meaning a beloved friend, or keeping a date with a, poten a, 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 a potential life partner reflects what you really value, you will consistently find yourself leaving work early to fulfill that true desire. People will naturally act in accordance with their own true highest values, spending money on what they truly value, spending time in ways that reflect what is most important to them. However, if they're not aware of their own values, and particularly if they believe, if they believe, believe, love to let. However, if they are not aware of their own values, and particularly if they believe, don't know why Sarah came up there. However, if, they, <laughs> however, if, <laughs> sorry. However, if they are not aware of their own values, particularly. If they are not aware of their own values and particularly, particularly, if they believe they should follow the values of another, they will likely experience frustration and other self depreciation, self depreciation, self depreciation emotions when they expect themselves to live outside their true highest values or even attempt to do so. So. If you want to know why you're not doing something you think you should, or why you can't stop doing something you think you shouldn't, the answer will always be the same. 
you are inevitably going to do what you truly value most. You may be frustrated with yourself because you expect yourself to live outside your own true highest values. But however you feel about your shortcomings or your bad behavior, you will in fact continue to behave in whatever way aligns with your own true highest values. Sorry, I'm just feeling the, um, not emotions, no. I'm just feeling this passion come on strong here. I'm just trying my best to, to, uh, try my best to be stronger than that, if that makes sense. Be stronger than this passion. My fire inside it. It's fire coming within me from, or uh, no person, whatever, who cares? The fire within me, the warrior within me, <laughs> the light within me to, uh, be stronger than what's coming through. Okay. Whether you're negative or positive, be stronger than what's coming through. So, okay. Okay. You may be frustrated with yourself because you expect yourself to live outside your own highest values. But however you feel about your shortcomings or your bad behavior, you will in fact continue to behave in whatever way aligns with your own true highest values. By contrast, when you become aware of your own highest values and wholeheartedly pursue the goals pers <laughs> pursue the goals that express them, your life will begin to embody the kind of fulfillment and inspiration experienced by history's extraordinary leaders and achievers. Awareness of their highest values is aware of oh, Awareness of their highest values is the secret of their achievement, and it can be the secret of yours. This is why becoming aware of those true highest values is so important. This is why I have written this book to share what the power of the this, this is, I have written this book to share what the power of the values factor. How do you know when you are expressing your true highest values and when you are reflecting social idolisms? So. Here's an important clue. Anytime you find yourself saying, I should, I need to, or you really must, you can pretty certain, be pretty certain that you are talking about social idolisms or the values of some external authority instead of expressing your own true highest values. When you hear yourself saying, I desire to, I choose to, or I love to, then you know that you're talking about a goal that is truly valuable to you. I'm not trying to push you aside. Uh, I'm just focusing on my work here just trying to spread the message. Those are the goals you would inevitably achieve because they align with your highest values. But when you take on goals that are not aligned with your highest values, then you will, in all probability, struggle. External influences often seem to make it difficult to achieve your goals. Going within to choose your goals mean that those goals are far more likely to be achieved. <laughs> All right, that's nice. You're funny. Let's play the song that I woke up with to finish this off because it's just so funny. Oh. And then I'm going to leave it at that. I'm sorry about these distractions. I, I can't explain it unless you've had a soulmate or a twin that's trying to interrupt you and he doesn't mean to do it intentionally. He just wants to connect. And he can connect, and that's fine. I make jokes, but when he tries to connect with you in a very passionate way or a very like a sexual way, and you're feeling all the energy, and it's very strong, it gets quite frustrating when it happens on a consistent, regular basis. That's all I'm trying to say.
Can I break the time? 